All right, so we have uh, finished up with the uh, peripheral nervous system, looked at uh, somatic and, or I'm, I'm sorry, um, yeah, at the peripheral nervous system. So we're looking, we looked at somatic and we looked at autonomic and then we broke them down a little further. Um, at, in the central nervous system, we're, we're now uh, looking at basically the brain and um, the spinal cord. And when we're looking at that, probably one of the key things, uh, key concepts to understand um, is something that we refer to as, the, uh, as a uh, reflex, reflex arc. And this diagram below shows you exactly how that, how that works. Um, the, the, the mechanism of uh, sense, sensation down here is such that once we feel the heat of the candle on our fingertip, it goes into um, and down our, our uh, down our arm, through our shoulders, down through the sensory neurons that bring it into the, um, the spinal cord, and it actually gets processed right here and sent back out, and that's what makes our uh, an arc, if you will. And so we don't really see. Uh, we don't think about what we're doing. It is an automatic process, um, and and that's part of making our reflexes uh, what they are. Is that uh, there are a lot of things that we don't have to process to think about per se, and a reflex arc is one of those things. Um, and in the central nervous system, it is key in terms of understanding that. The other thing to keep in mind when we're talking about the central nervous system is uh, what we would refer to as neural networks. Um, and everything in our system uh, works as a network. And so um, when, when you fire and have a signal that comes through uh, into the system, and let's just say we have three different neurons that are impacted by a stimulation. Um, and then, essentially, it spreads throughout a, the, an, an entire other system of neurons that, are, that um, impact each other, uh, impact crossways. Um, and before too long, you have this incredibly um, uh, dense, uh, dense network of communications between all of these neurons that um, make it so that uh, this cross uh, um, fertilization be, or cross stimulation between all of these uh, makes for a system that works very, very quickly, obviously, but also um, wires itself together. And so one of the keys to keep in mind here um, and, and kind of a concept, if you will, uh, within the network is the idea here that neurons that uh, that fire together uh, together uh, wire together, and so um, as we learn uh, pa uh, 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 learning patterns, we begin to develop these kinds of networks. Um, and so neurons that fire together tend to wire together, and that's very much a part of the learning process is that um, we begin to create pathways that become more and more automatic. So when I tell you uh, or I give you a new task, it w typically where we start when we watch is we will mimic something, and, and that's part of the beginning part of learning and before too long we get proficient at the learning or at the um, mimicking and then before too long what comes next is creativity and efficiency um, which we add to it. Uh, we find quicker and quicker ways uh, to do the same task with, the less, with less amount of energy and time and that's really a part of the learning process. So neurons that fire together 
they are wired together and that makes them that much more efficient in terms of understanding. This reflex arc right here uh, is quite key in terms of understanding that same concept. This is not this is this is not learning. This is this is a good example of automatic. Um, and and because we don't have to learn how to pull our hand back. Now that may be not be the case for people that have a disorder where they don't sense pain. Uh, when that happens, then obviously we we depend on pain a lot more than we know. Uh, but but when that happens, this this uh, connection, if you will, is broken, and they don't respond. They don't feel the pain because these skin receptors are not operating. Um, and the pain signal does not travel, they don't pull their finger back and they end up being burned, not even knowing that they are. The other component of this reflex arc I want to highlight for you is the interneurons. That's what makes it all happen in connecting these things together. If there's further activity that needs to be done, then the brain then is involved in, in further uh, adjustment of action and so forth. All right, so we have uh, one last system to take a look at, and that is the endocrine system. Um, if if the nervous system uh, is is one means of communication, um, the nervous system itself um, is the speedy one. It runs along at Mach speed. Uh, on the other hand, the endocrine system um, is the system that um, is uh, slow and steady um, and that's that's really the way to understand it is slow and steady um, it happens at, at a very slow rate it, it um, um, does its job on a consistent basis it never deviates from its job sometimes it gets too far out of hand sometimes uh, but the endocrine system itself is the slow and steady. It spreads its, its uh, um, substances throughout the body through the variety of gland, glandular systems. But the nervous system's fast, endocrine system slow and steady. Uh, some of the key components of these uh, is that generally these systems uh, secrete uh, and the substances it uses, which are parallel to nor neurotransmitters, is hormones. They, each of these glands secrete the hormones that impact uh, the brain. They influence our interest in food and uh, sex and aggression and other things of that sort. Um, in a lot of ways, they are chemically um, uh, similar to neurotransmitters. So um, uh, chemically, uh, very similar, chemically similar. Uh, to neurotransmitters and and they they operate within the system um, in a variety of ways uh, the hypothalamus for example um, the uh, each of these systems that we have up here that are highlighted for you uh, the hypothalamus uh, manages the pituitary gland which we refer to as the the master gland the pituitary gland itself um, is uh, actually emits a variety of of hormones but it it uh, manages a variety of things within the system uh, that uh, manages a lot of other things so hypothalamus uh, controls the pituitary gland. Remember, the hypothalamus is just below the thalamus. That's why we get the word hypo. Um, and it impacts the pituitary gland. Then you move down the body, and you've got uh, the thyroid and parathyroid. Um, and thyroid has to do with metabolism. If you've ever known anybody um, that uh, struggles with hypothyroidism, um, sometimes they will have trouble maintaining weight or um, keeping weight off uh, and so the hypothyroid and thyroid metabolism um, is part of that uh, landscape as well uh, it regulates uh, the parathyroid para is oftentimes beside um, and the parathyroid um, uh, is 
looking at and handling uh, calcium in the blood itself, uh, which is keeping bones in shape and so forth. Um, then we move farther down to the adrenal glands, uh, and the adrenal glands themselves, as you can probably imagine, um, uh, emit um, the uh, adrenaline itself, and um, it is part of the fight or flight response. Um, uh, the uh, uh, and so you're going to see that occur when when there is the greatest amount of stress or the greatest amount of demand on your body. Uh, the pancreas uh, is a another key. Um, uh, component of the endocrine system it, again is regulating the sugar in your blood oftentimes is connected to uh, someone who might be diabetic it's a dysfunction of the pancreas and handling insulin in the blood uh, to help with digestion and management of glucose in the blood bloodstream and then finally really the uh, sexual organs themselves uh, testes um, uh, in men and uh, ovaries in women, um, they are not only active in uh, the secondary sexual characteristics, but they are also um, uh, active in uh, the sex hormones like testosterone for men. Uh, you might hear some commercials on low T. Uh, for men, as they age, their testosterone levels tend to decrease, and in women, it's estrogen um, and progesterone. Estrogen uh, and progesterone. And uh, th as I said, these are functioning at a, a constant rate. Now, what produces, obviously, a woman's period is the... the um, uh, increase and decrease of these two hormones that produces the the menses for women and that's uh, that's a good example of how these hormones tend to work so the endocrine system is very much the slow and steady um, the nervous system is the speedy way of impacting uh, the the um, overall body systems um, but the the key to keep in mind here is kind of how this feedback system works because you start with the brain and then from the brain you move to uh, the pituitary gland itself pituitary and then you have other glands remember that that one is the master gland so you have other glands and then the next step beyond that is hormones And beyond that, the body and the brain. Body and brain. And then the whole system essentially does it, it does it over again. The key to keep in mind in all of our systems, and I'll be talking about this throughout, is the whole idea of feedback. Our body could not operate very well without feedback. Uh, the very systems depend on feedback. So something has to be monitoring, for example, blood glucose. Something, some system of the body has to be monitoring uh, that, that particular system in order to give the brain the information it needs to, um, to alter the uh, glucose level in the brain. Um, and that is key. And what's fascinating about feedback is that it's not only true biologically, but it's also true um, psychologically. It's also true uh, socially. Uh, we, in, we interact around feedback. What I hear, whether that's biologically, auditorially what I'm hearing, or whether it's something that um, I'm interacting with somebody and they give me quote-unquote feedback, and this particular kind of um, uh, process, you will see time and time again throughout our system of, of uh, when we talk about how the body operates and, and that part of it. The key to keep in mind here is the major systems, the 
peripheral central nervous system and how it breaks down these are all key in terms of the interaction between body and mind and body and brain.